record button. Uh, and I'm recording to my machine, so I will post this up to YouTube after we've uh, had a conversation. Um, so yeah, so uh, thanks everybody for coming together for uh, for another committee meeting. We haven't had one for a wee while, um, and I kicked off uh, the idea that maybe we need to discuss some bigger themes and topics uh, through email. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to make sure there were uh, no other things that people wanted to talk about before we talk about basically what I raised in the email. Um, or if people don't want to talk about that as well, let me know. <laughs> I think you can just go for it. Okay, cool. Awesome. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I had uh, a moment and I thought I'd put it down in email because I've been hearing a few vibes from a few different people in the committee um, that like, there's a lot of effort that goes into just running a society, right? Like there's a lot of uh, it's not necessarily a lot of time that comes out of it, but it does come into our thought processes a lot. And we have to put time aside for committee meetings. And then we have to put time aside for the guilt of not having committee meetings when we don't have them. Um, and that all that all plays to it. And then the other side of it is uh, there are, with the closing down of no bots, the fact that we haven't run a JavaScript conference for a wee while now, uh, and it's not looking like that, that there's another one coming out of the blocks anytime soon. Um, I was wondering, uh, if we could all come together and decide whether there is a point in having a society at all anymore. Um, if we can look to uh, either do a wind down of the society, a revamp of what the society stands for, open to any ideas on all of that. But I do want to separate the idea that uh, closing down the society also means closing down the Slack. It doesn't, you know, like we can keep the Slack going, we can keep the other things going without the society. Um, behind them, we can have a different mechanism for running that that's less guilt driven, that le that's less uh, meaningful for people to actually have to jump on a monthly call together um, and talk about stuff. Uh, really, we can have that as a volunteer effort if people want to get involved, if people don't want to get involved, then there's no, there's no guilt for people to, to slide off. You know, everybody's got busy lives, everybody's got things. Um, so my proposal was that maybe we should look at that closing down the committee, but I did want to make sure that everybody had a chance to, to have their say uh, and have thoughts brought to the table. So uh, I'm keen that everybody in the room uh, gets gets time to, to discuss it and thoughts that come out of it, really. Um, yeah. Uh, well, a couple of things. One, that if we are um, winding up the society, there are uh, certain hoops we have to jump through. Um, and chiefly, we have to have two separate general meetings for all of the membership to make that happen. Um, and we have to appoint um, somebody to be the liquidator of the society. Um, so that's something that we would need to make happen, uh, which in the short term at least, does sound like more effort, to be very honest. Um, but also, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable with leaving the Slack channel running without having an actual plan for what happens with that. Because I, I think it needs somebody's hand at Tiller to make sure it doesn't go off the rails, if you forgive the mixed metaphors. Um, and I would be more comfortable with closing it than not having it for a phone plan about that, personally. I think we could manage this like without having the committee bound to it. No issues. Um, as long as we've got a group of people that are active, you know, sitting there around, we've still got the moderators section sitting there. As long as, you know, people can report things and we can act on it, then that's no issues. To whom though? Like that sounds actually really reasonable and workable but we need to have somebody that has the admin rights. Um, and yes, there is a moderators channel, but I will remind you that, you know, we have gone out for volunteers for moderators a couple of times and actually nobody's put their hands up. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Slack's not super, super active. There's not a lot to, to keep your eyes on. I've been keeping my eyes on it for, you know, quite a lot and, it's been pretty good. Not not a lot of act, uh, things that we actually have to act on. Um, so yeah, we can still keep on adding people the same way. No issues. Um, it's really more just so people can connect through it specifically for JavaScript, I guess. 
uh, and I don't see any issues with keeping it open as long as everyone's, we, we can still have the code of conduct sitting there. You know, that doesn't, none of that goes away. It's just more, it's not bound by the society. It's just bound by, you know, a group of people that actually want to agree on one thing. Yeah. And I don't, I think we would need to make sure that there's a process in place for that, right? Like, yeah, how definitely. do you become a moderator? Who's in charge of making sure that moderation is like flexible or, or not flexible, but evolves over time, right? Like these things aren't static forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, like moderation is classic in the site channel. It happens a lot at certain periods of time and then it'll die for a period of time. You know, we've got less active users at the moment. It just takes a moment for everything to, to become an issue for a while and then it'll die down again or, it, it won't and we have to be able to respond to that um i don't think that i don't think we can deny that there'll be something that we have to put in place to replace a, an elected body that is the society right um and but that's just a process right we have to work out what that process is and the community can come together with that it doesn't necessarily need to be driven by us as a committee to do like we can we can certainly start that process off and make sure that it happens um and not let the slack continue without something to, to govern it in some way shape or form i, I believe in that but um, whether it needs a incorporated society that uh, that has accounts and <laughs> an accountant and uh financial obligations and everything else that goes alongside of it really uh, i mean that that's really the key to here right we're, we're more than just volunteers on a on a thing we have uh, a number of bank accounts we have money we have membership we have uh an accountant that we have to pay um, and that's all like legally onerous right like if we don't do that then somebody is going to have to front up and say uh, sorry we didn't actually follow the right process for an incorporated society so we can't just drop it you know like hey i lose lose my uh, mojo or i'm completely disengaged because i'm doing 101 other things and the accounts don't get filed that's a pretty big serious mistake on my part you know, if that happens um, so that's really where i'm i'm coming from one uh, that we we destroy all process or we get rid of any governance at all over this thing. Would it would a good idea then possibly be to um, change it though? Basically, to remove the legal burden, to so dissolve the society from a, as a legal entity, but we run the society still almost just as an open project, if you will, um, for lack of a comparison. Um, where we don't necessarily, well, we some guidelines that we say that we'll do basically like we've been doing now without the legal requirements. The, and obviously we wouldn't charge membership fees, things like that. Uh, we just, we have a meeting every now and then and we make sure uh, if we have people coming and going, that's fine. Um, yeah, and just run it the same way without necessarily the legal the legal boundaries. I mean, and, you know, it's kind of like how we have, we have been doing without all the extra burden. Hey James, sorry, um, you missed the, the intro to everything. Hopefully you can hear us. I can, I can hear you, I don't know if you can hear me. We, we can, can. Yeah. yeah. Excellent, excellent. I'm, I'm borrowed my son's headset because everything's down in the office, which is behind a large amount of renovating tools. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, thanks for jumping on. Uh, we're just discussing what it means to, um, to uh, follow up from the email that I sent around around uh, potentially closing down the society and what that would mean, what the obligations were. We're discussing what it means for the Slack channel uh, in terms of like, we don't actually want to lose governance over the Slack channel or like um, moderation over the Slack channel. We don't, we want to process there. It is, it's a group of people that um, we want to have some sense of uh, openness and, and transparency to how it's run, but it doesn't necessarily need all the legal ramifications of a, of a, of an incorporated society, which is what Kevin just raised. It's the idea that maybe we can run this without a, a legal entity um, and we can do this as a group of volunteers who meet as infrequently as we currently do without the uh, the guilt that's associated with meeting, meeting infrequently, I think is uh, the best way I can put it for myself. Uh, I don't want to talk to everybody else, but certainly um, that's what happens, right? Like we miss a meeting for four, four months and I feel incredibly guilty that I haven't sorted stuff out. And in the meantime, I'm very busy with 101 other things. So, you know, that's life. Um, yeah. Yeah, fair so, enough. Um, uh, bear with me. I'm just trying to get the video up. Um, no I, worries. 
I disabled the camera on my laptop many, many moons ago, and I'm trying to find out how I re enable it. <laughs> but yeah, no, that sounds good. So um, I'm all caught up. So cool. Well, I'm keen to make sure that everybody's had a say. So, um, Oren, I'm wondering if you've got any thoughts from, uh, from listening in. Yeah, so my perspective is going to be that without a governance structure of, of some variety for the Slack, in the event that we do dissolve the society, I would want the Slack to drop. Um, just because without that governance structure, without some way of providing code of conduct management, providing moderation, providing those tools that we are providing right now to a community, um, the community that exists becomes unsafe. And that's not something I would like to see it as be our legacy. Uh, we step down and it just becomes yet another unsafe open source space. Um, as far as switching over to um, like just being volunteers, we are still at that point talking about shutting everything down um, and the entire pile of work that that entails. So um, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, if we were going to go down that route of just move down to we're just volunteer organizing a society at that point, wouldn't we just take it to the community, to the membership we have and say, we're going to do this thing we think, do y'all want to take it up instead? Um, as more of a, uh, we're all stepping down at once sort of thing versus a, we're just going to shut it down sort of thing. I don't know if I made sense there. Sorry. Uh, well, technically, we would kind of be doing that implicitly anyway. Um, so let me just read to you all basically what the steps for liquidation are, because um, I think that will be useful. Um, so step one is the members of the society pass a resolution at a general meeting of the society appointing a li liquidator. So we have to get consensus from our members, quorum, basically, to say that we are doing this thing and we want to appoint a liquidator. So we do actually have to get consensus from the members of the society, which is more than just us, it's the whole membership. Um, my feeling on that is that, um, you know, we are the people who have stepped forward to be committee members. Um, so we are the people that are interested in running it. Um, and uh, we'd probably be unlikely to get a wholesale slate of new people willing to take it over, but I guess you never know. Anyway, step two uh, is that the resolution passed at step one of appointing a liquidator is confirmed at a second general meeting. The second meeting must be called for that purpose and be held not less than 30 days after the first meeting. So there has to be a gap of a month there. Uh, and then step three is a liquidator or liquidators will then be appointed by the society and liquidation will commence. Um, I think that what is implicit here is that um, somebody who is a liquidator is somebody that has experience with doing that for societies. So much in the same way that we hire an accountant and we would be hiring a liquidator to, um, to wrap that up. I think that we have um, some surfeit of funds from the original NZJS con that we could probably use for paying for that. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, on this page about liquidation, which I will post in the uh, committee channel now, um, they do have a link to, uh, would you believe it, the yellow pages. <laughs> I'm recommending a a uh, list of people that have uh, experience in these matters. So there is a, a formal process that we have to follow. And yes, that does involve going out to the whole membership and checking that. Yeah. So, I mean, the process itself uh, is we obviously have to ask our membership that they're okay with shutting down. We have to uh, liquidate our assets and make sure that we don't owe anything to the tax, uh, in tax obligations, in debtors, we don't have any debtors as such. We'll uh, owe something to our own accountant. We'll owe GST. Um, we'll certainly have uh, a SIFI. Uh, we've got in the region of, sorry, I've just opened up the bank account, um, in the region of five grand sitting in various bank accounts uh, for, the, for the society. Um, 
of which I wouldn't imagine that would all go to a liquidator's fees. Uh, there isn't enough uh, there for people to liquidate. <laughs> like the, the obligations here are minor. And I do wonder if our accountant does count as a liquidator at some point, whether our accountant can do both things. Um, they should be over most of our obligations. Um, at which point we also need to make sure that, hey, should there be a surplus of money left over, how does that work, right? Like, uh, do we go and refund everybody's membership fees for the year and then work out what's left and then find charities to give to? You know, we have to have some ideas for that, which is, which is all good. Like, that can come out of the membership. I don't think that needs to be our decision. We can certainly have some, um, some thoughts about that. I'm happy for that to be a really wide open conversation once we drop this on the membership, right? Like, hey, we are looking to liquidate the society, close down the society as a whole, which means we won't hold any funds, which means we need to get rid of these <laughs> funds in a legal way. Um, uh, what, are the, what are the things that we could fund uh, in the, it, to do that? Is it just refunds that people want or do people prefer that we give back to charity or to JavaScript meetups or something, you know, like, hey, that can happen. Uh, and I don't think we need to make that decision right now. What we need to make the decision of is this is the path we want to go down. Um, I mean, the other thing is, right, like I could step down and somebody else can come in and chairperson. And if you're all still motivated, then carry on. Like, I don't want to speak for everybody when I just, you know, I have 101 things that are on my plate. And this is probably the least uh, pressing thing that seems most, this seems like it's lost its reason for, for being in my sense. You know, like, there are other ways we can achieve the things we achieve as a society right now. It was my own thought. Um, yeah. Um, for me, it's basically um, the the Slack channel, the, well, the whole of the Slack for JavaScript Society seems to have um, dropped catastrophically. Um, and uh, uh, that was after the, for want of a better word, schism. Um, and uh, I'm I'm just not seeing the the drive in the people that remain. Um, I don't know if other people are seeing that same sort of same sort of problem. Um, yeah, I I still think that the society has has a place, and I think that um, the reason we started the society is still valid, but. Um, there, I've I was part of the um, Waikato Linux users group as it died, and um, yeah, it wasn't a pleasant thing to be involved with. And um, the first part of it was people stopped turning up, um, and I'm just scared that I'm seeing the same thing here: um, people just not turning up and it just fading out of existence. Um, if we are going to uh, dissolve the society, I think that um, we need to ask that question. Um, if there's enough people in the society who definitely want to keep it going, great, then I'm glad to be part of that. But if people genuinely don't see the society filling the role that it used to fill, um, then we probably should listen to that too. Yeah, I mean, that's a scourge of volunteer organisations, right? Like. You rely on volunteers, <laughs> and they the wax. And it's always it's always the same people who um, do all of the work. I mean, you have been uh, absolutely amazing in the stuff that you've done, right from the um, the web developers conference and right the way through. Um, and Jen has been phenomenal, um, but uh, it like most organisations, the people who have the passion get the jobs and because they want to do them and when they start getting overloaded or overwhelmed no one else wants to step up because they everyone wants the benefits no one wants to put in the work basically and well i mean if we we have an election every year roughly <laughs> um mm. and you know it, it's as since we have started uh, mem you know the committee has gotten smaller um, I think at one point we had a people on the committee 
um, I think the first year or so. Um, and yeah, and, and then it's, it's just it's the six of us. Um, and every year we ask for volunteers and people that want to want to try. And you now it's just the, the the faithful few at this stage. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I think maybe in I think in many ways that the committee. I mean, the the society has spoken. We have had you know since we since it's been going on, there have been. Um, you know, peaks and valleys where, you know, everything's dead for a good long while. And then the next thing, you know, a couple more people come in and, you know, more people are, t you know, talking and everything's happening and then it falls down again and then builds back up. And as far as I'm aware, every online community I've ever been involved in is a bit like that anyway. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. That's the yeah. answer. I mean. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do want to separate like the space from from at the Slack, which is out, obviously an outcome of us having a society. And we decided to set up a Slack, and we invited a bunch of people, and we all knew a bunch of people, and everybody came in, and we created this great space that people were having conversations. And we've been very cognizant of making sure that it's a safe and open space, which is great. Like, um, and it waxes and wanes as we have to have like ban hammered a couple of people that obviously had a bit of a an impact i'm not going to deny but that's okay like that's people voting where they want to be and i'm not going to i'm not going to say that we did the wrong thing because we created an open and like we stood by our values right um but yeah, exactly. the society itself the first meeting we had was alex gibson had to buy some kits for no bots and had to have somewhere that owned that equipment like that's the only reason that the society started right was we had to have a legal entity that owned this kit so that we could share it out amongst New Zealand and it could go everywhere. No bots is no more a thing inside of, uh, of JavaScript New Zealand because nobody wants to run it. Nobody has the impetus. I don't even know where the kit is right now. I think it's... I, I did put my hand up to, to run that. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, just, just putting that out there. <laughs> I, I did ask. Um, and I did want to progress it because... I actually have a community of people that would be very interested in that here. Um, it actually would be at the zero building. There's a lot of people there that, you know, it's like all the tech companies and Napier all together. I thought, well, they would definitely be interested in doing some kind of little meetup with that, but I don't know where it progressed to. So yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple of sons who would be really interested in that, but um, I also, uh, um, it, it's just, sorry. I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> yeah, with with the kids, there's, there's a, a company, um, Bright Sparks New Zealand. They actually do that exact thing, electronics to, to kids and to primary schools and to um, things like that. And they teach them and just give them an afternoon of something that's fun, different, you know, see if they actually want to get into this kind of thing. And I think that kind of thing is actually what I, I really wanted out of JavaScript New Zealand myself is I wanted something like that. Um, Cause when I was, you know, a teenager, I went and, you know, participated in all of this, the stuff that other people were doing for the younger kids, but I, I just don't know if it's a thing anymore. So ASB is the one that actually own bright sparks now. And they actually, and from what I've seen, it hasn't been the same kind of thing anymore either. So it's changed from this thing that was cool to a thing that, you know, it's just some advertising thing to <laughs> some big big company, right? It, that's what it is. It's it's advertising to ASB. It's it, if you go to Bright Sparks, it's literally it's their branding now. That, that's their company. That's it's just part of them. But we no longer have that thing anymore. And I still know the person that that goes around to schools and you know, if there was someone there that actually took these no bots around to schools and things, then I think the schools would actually be very interested in it. So I don't, I don't know if you guys had the same kind of idea of what that would have been, you know, it, cause it's, it's not just all about us, you know, older ones, <laughs> you know, so, so sometimes we need to go, you know, younger and, you know, start getting them interested. And maybe if we want to start getting them interested in JavaScript, just like, you know, if there's a Python community, they would want to get, you know, teenagers inter interested in it. That so, was actually pretty much what the original purpose of yeah. NoBots okay. was. Well, if that's the purpose, uh, I would literally, I would take out a day of month or something. Yeah, the thing is, around. yeah, I'm not totally convinced that a day a month is enough. Yeah, yeah, 
I understand that, um, yeah. but it's. I, I think I know enough people, and I think we all know enough people to actually, you know, find the the teachers that actually want to take it and have a go with it. Mm. Um, it would join up with Node Source. You know, we'd just refer them to some of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I'm really heartened that you're keen, Fabian, because that sounds amazing. Um, what I think practically you'd need to make it happen is you'd need to get some advice from the original runners if you haven't yeah. already. Yeah, yeah. We need to find out where the kit is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think even, if, even if we don't have the original kit. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I know. I, I, would, know I would buy one myself kind of thing. That, oh, that, well, it, yeah. you know, it's not one. You know, they had a whole, like, 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. They, um, they had a really good setup. So, you know, they've got experience to learn from, is what I'm saying. Um, yeah. But more than that, you need a team of volunteers. Um, because I, I think that whenever they were running events, they would generally have about six, eight people on the ground helping with every event that they ran. Um, okay. Because it, yeah. it's, it's quite hands-on. Um, if you've got people at a newbie level, you want to be giving them the right support. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I understand that, and I, I get I get what would be um, what would be required for that. Uh, I understand it's it's more than just one person going out. You know, it's it's a few people actually, you know, helping out and getting everyone on the same same level. So, and maybe but that yeah. is the the purpose, right? Like, if we find a purpose and we've got enough people who want to get behind it, that maybe that is the purpose for the society again, right? Like, we started with one purpose. We then created a conference as well that gave us a secondary purpose. Those two things have kind of waned uh, over the last wee while, which has left us with a lack of purpose, for want of a better, better word. Uh, just this, this uh, governance idea that we currently fulfill. And nobody, nobody enjoys just being about governance, right? Let's, let's do that. <laughs> um, I'm on a school board. Don't enjoy just being about governance. That's not the point. Um, so like, if people want to run that, I'm absolutely for like giving people the, the power and the impetus that they need to be able to do that. Like that's, that's entirely applicable for the society. I, I think you should be encouraged and not, not discouraged and we can, we can make those work. I don't know if I have the time, like at a simple level right now, I, I go and teach coding into my, my kid's school once a week, but that's outside of the society. That's part of co, co club, you know, um, there's already a bunch of educational societies. I don't want to take away from those. Um, that would be my only input. But um, but yeah, I, I don't disagree with it. I, I, I'd be wholeheartedly behind the society continuing and I'll sign over to, to the next person. But we need to find those people who are really uh, involved, right? It can't just take one person because you'll end up just being the person pushing the dunghill up, heap, up, up the hill on your own. And that's not fun from experience. <laughs> No, I definitely agree there. I've been the only person pushing um, something that I tried to start up and uh, yeah, it's not fun. So. Like, I think the only reason we've survived so long is because we've got each other, right? Like, we've got a whole bunch of people on this committee who help each other. We don't guilt each other. We come together. We understand why it's hard to get together. We have some really good conversations and we try and drive the society forward. It's just like, I'm personally lacking what it is that we're trying to do anymore right um, and it's been a little while since we've had a thing that we've been trying to do yeah. that i guess that's a very personal feeling um, but i was wondering if everybody else has been in the same way uh, on my part i've been toying with running the conference again but the blockers for me have been um knowing what was going on with this js fest thing i still haven't seen anything i don't think the website's updated or anything like that i had a look today um, but if I'm honest with myself, you know, if I, if I really thought that was the only blocker and, uh, oh, then I could have chased that out myself, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, the uh, conference is eminently doable in Wellington again. Um, you know, I made all of the contacts happen the first time around. It would arguably be a lot simpler the second time. Still a lot of work though. Um, I started a new job this year and um, have been quite chock a block with that. That's finally calming down now. Um, I'm pretty sure that my company would give me time to run it, uh, but I, I can't do it without 
the bank accounts and the accountants and a treasurer that are really keen and on board, basically. Um, and I'm not saying, yes, let's definitely do this thing and guilt trip you all into doing it because, uh, like I say, you know, I could have been more forthright about this any time in the last couple of months, you know? I think that's an important question is that we want that to be the vision for the society though. Is the society's vision, we run a conference every, how long has it been, three years? Two years? Well, I don't know actually, I actually don't know. So is that the vision for the society going forward is we run a conference for the JavaScript community every two or three years. And if so, that's great, that's a vision. We have a vision to go forwards with. But as you were saying, Owen, like, do we have a vision? And the, um, the adjunct to that is, is the conference enough? Is it going to be enough? Um, what do you I mean would by love enough? Is, is, is a organization like JavaScript Society just producing a conference once every two years enough to keep people interested in the society? Um, especially given that the last one through no fault of its own um, uh, just failed to happen. Um, I have tried to talk to um, Anna and Charles about JS Fest, and I seem to get a cold shoulder from both of them, which surprises me because I used to consider them reasonably good friends, and I don't really know what's happened. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I can't seem to engage either of them in any form of reasonable conversation at the moment. So when I ask what's happening with JS Fest, um, I just get told, oh, yeah, it's ticking along. And that's all I get. So I don't even know if JS Fest is going to happen. Um, I'm just trying to be devil's advocate. I'm not poo pooing the idea of the society being um, the provider of a, let's face it, a fairly spectacular conference. Um, and I am very, very keen to help out where I can. Um, but I'm just wondering is that going to be enough? Are we going to find enough interested people to be able to hold that together? I think maybe Kevin knocked the nail on the head actually that just one of the biggest tells is just that the size of the community has gone down quite a lot over you know the last couple of years um, and it's just not quite as sustainable at this level of um, committee membership um, and we've been blessed with um, really keen people coming on board like yourself James and Fabian, um, I feel like I ought to apologise that you came <laughs> on with a lot of fire and vim and vigour in the last year and we've done not very much. So my apologies about that. Um, but uh, yeah, we don't have the same size of a committee that we had before and it was easier to get shit done when we had more people to parcel out the load between. Um, yeah. Perhaps we should be looking at winding up, keeping the Slack channel going on a more voluntary basis, but with some still process and ownership there. Um, but, I, but part of winding up is going out to the general membership and saying, look, this is what we're thinking is happening. And just opening the table to the discussion of do you feel differently? Um, is there anybody else out there that feels like there is something that we should be doing or that should be? And are they keen to be involved to make that happen? Can I make a proposal? Um, I think I've heard now Fabian uh, has like this undesired, this unmet desire to have no bots become a thing again, slightly, like not quite sure how it's going to work, but there is still some desire there. Jen, you still have some desire to run a conference. You're not quite sure whether you can do it or put it off or whether you're gonna have time or whatever. But given that this is a process that we have to go through at some point, and it's gonna take a while and it takes a bunch of meetings, 
is it worth us saying, hey, this might be the outcome for next AGM is that we start this process. Uh, if we have not progressed any further on a conference, going anywhere with no bots, and I'm happy to find out where that kid is, by the way, uh, I can talk to Alex and we can work that out. Um, and if we get to the point of like January and we still haven't made progress and we're still running around in this circle of, oh, I think I'm going to get around to it one day or, you know, we're going to get some volunteers together, then maybe the outcome is, okay, AGM comes, that's the first meeting where we go, actually, we're going to liquidate this society unless somebody wants to stand up and, and run this in a different way, right? Uh, we can we can be really open and honest about that with our membership right now. Like we can send them the email. We can stop doing uh, paid memberships. Paid memberships. We can mm. stop that side of it. We can stop doing subscription renewals right now because you know if we're thinking about closing down the society anyway, that seems like the most honest and open thing to do is to stop taking money for memberships. Right. Um, the other side of it is then we go through over the next few months, work out whether JSConf can run, or whatever, NZJSConf uh, can run. Sorry, what is it? <laughs> I'm really sorry, it's wrong. Um, NZJSConf, and I love that you still can't say it properly. <laughs> <laughs> I, am so I was sorry. trying to transcribe some of the videos a while back, and I was just giggling to myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, uh, yeah, okay, NZJSConf. Uh, if we can't get that up and running for 2020, like we don't feel that's going to happen, um, then that might be a really good signal. If we if we haven't got anything off no bots, that's a really good signal that really we've, we've done what we can do. But I feel like there's something still there. Um, you both indicated that there is something still there that you want to scratch at, uh, and there's no loss if we do let this run out for the for the for the year essentially, right? Because we're going to have to think about all of the outcomes that we have to go through for winding down the society. Not the least of that is uh, how we govern the Slack channel. If we want the Slack channel to stay up or, or close down, um, you know, even if we close it down, that's actually okay because there are other 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 channels for people to go through. Like we can be really open and honest about why we're closing it down. They're all welcome to go and open up their own Slack channels or whatever they want to do, or go and join the other ones um, that we all know are out there. Um, so I think just being open and honest about that's the position of where we're at right now is that we're, we're possibly going to close down uh, unless we can get, and then you might find that people are like, yeah, I want to make the JavaScript conference happen. I'd love to help out. Or yeah, I actually want to get really involved with no bots. I didn't know this was a thing that we did. Um, like, that, that, let's be fair, it's been years since, uh, since the last JavaScript conference, which means that people don't necessarily know that we did it last time, right? Um, there are a bunch of people in that channel who have no clue that this is this is a group of people that ran that. Uh, have no clue that we have these no bots around <laughs> at a simple level. So maybe we can reinstill some some interest in that the channel. Um, and yeah, and that might be good. And as you say, it may be enough to light a fire under some more people out in the community, give us some more support than we can actually do something with. And if it doesn't. That's a great sign. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's better to be open and honest. One of the things I've always always said is uh, don't drop subtle hints. I only step on them and break them. <laughs> um, so being being overt about what's what we see happening and asking people what they want. I mean, this is this is their society, right? If they want to do something about it this is their chance to step up. And if they don't want to do something about it, well, then maybe it is, maybe the society has served its term and we all shake hands and um, get together for a beer after the bank account's closed or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that sounds like a pretty good proposal to me. Um, my one caveat on is that I think that right now you're the only person who actually knows how to do any of the facilities of the treasurer and if you personally are feeling a bit overcommitted, um I, I know it's asking for more of you in the short term um but it, it would be really good to get a little bit of that knowledge into fabian's head so that we've got a little bit of um uh, we're spreading that responsibility around a little bit 
Absolutely. And I've been remiss in like uh, bank account setups, making sure that Fabian has access. I don't even know if you've got access to zero yet, Fabian. I'm really sorry if you haven't. Yeah, um, yeah, I've got I've got access to, to zero. I don't know about the bank account, but I'm sure I could go into a bank and tell them, well, here you go. Here I am. I've got a form that you can fill out. And yeah. yeah, here's what here's my signature. Um, uh, <laughs> give me give me access to great steaming wads of cash. Yeah, yeah um, thirty five grand. So it's not the big deal. Uh, but okay, I, so so small wads of cash. Yeah, small wads. <laughs> but to to put it in perspective, uh, Alex still has access to the bank account. So does Walter Rumsby still have access to the bank account. So to be honest, I haven't, I haven't seen him in ages. <laughs> exactly. So. Um, this is something that I really need to clean up quite significantly. Um, is, is that something that we we probably should like do tomorrow kind of thing? Or is it yeah, pre- so um, what I need to do is I need to go into ASB and get a form filled in. Uh, and then I need to basically scan the form and send it to you for you to sign in. And then you take it to ASB. And that's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not actually a big process. It's just I have to go to an ASB, right? to go into a bank that seems weird um no it's fine uh there's one around the corner from where i work now so i can do it i just like i literally haven't got off my ass to do it so that's on me uh and can you just pod me until i do it because yeah trust um, me i work in the digital um component of a bank and uh, <laughs> i think it's weird that i have to go into branches every now and then my wife keeps yeah. saying why can't i do this online why do i have to go in and into a branch but yeah <laughs> But at a first level, um, are people okay with my proposal? Like that that's what we aim to do. Like, does anybody have any concerns with that? Uh, for one, um, I agree with your proposal and um, with what Jen said. So yeah, I'm, I'm behind it. Just the existing concerns about the owners or the ongoing maintenance of the Slack uh, space but we've covered that already otherwise um i think it sounds okay all those in favor of doing that basically hi hi oh yeah that looks unanimous to me i mean are you all okay sorry i didn't catch what you said yeah okay cool um so what i'm going to do from here uh is uh, well, I'm going to set up Fabian with bank account access. That's that's step one. Uh, step two is I'm going to hand an email to our membership because I think that's the easiest way to make sure that we reach our membership. Um, yeah. And I'll ask you all to input on that, but I'll put up a draft and it will basically outline what we've spoken about today. It's like, this is where the society is right now. We are in need of volunteers. We are in need of motivation. If you have anything to bring, please let us know. These are the things we think we're going to try and still get off the ground in the next uh, like eight months, six months. Um, if that doesn't happen, then the likelihood is that our society is, is finished. Um, and you ha- you have to let us know if you're not okay with that, right? And then I'll post that same email to the Slack general channel because all of them have an interest. They might not be members, but that's okay. Um, I think we physically have to have a way of saying who is a member, even though we're not doing membership, paid membership. So I think free membership becomes a thing um, and that's okay. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, um, is there... What needs to happen to um, sort out uh, refunds for um, people or at least stop ongoing re- reoccurring payments? So is that I, will set this, I will cancel all the subscriptions in Stripe, like recurring. Yeah. I will set mm-hmm. the price point for the subscription to be zero, which okay. would mean that nobody gets billed going forward. Yeah. Um, I think on the top of my head, that's the simplest way to do it. I don't know if Stripe will let me do a free thing. If not, we'll. I'll try we'll surface it and just talk yeah. about it when it happens, yeah. So uh, that would you... be only after we discuss with the rest of the community? I, th- I think we are talking about doing that preemptively, Fabian, because um, we're kind of going into sort of a limbo where we're allowing that stuff might flourish again. But I personally, and I think this is the intent, would feel a little bit bad charging ongoing money for something that is a little bit on the ropes like that. Um, and it doesn't make that much financial difference to us in that short of a t- time frame if we um, are conservative and turn that off in the yeah. short term. And we can rethink that later if we need to. Yeah, I agree there because um, 
uh, worst case scenario, if we um, find that everyone suddenly gets excited about society again and we turn it back on, um, then the current members have had a period of free membership. Ooh, scary. Um, no, I think that that's fine. But um, we're going to do this in a reversible way, right? Is that what we're discussing? Yes. Let's just change it to non-reoccurring. Might just break everything, but yes. But you said you're going to put it to zero, right? So I'm going to put the price to zero right now, which means that we can put the price to something else later on. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's okay. I just got confused because I thought you said that you're going to stop it rather than. Uh, well, everybody's on a recurring subscription right now, and I need to make sure that those subscriptions recur at zero as well, if that's yeah. what happens. And I don't know. So it'll either be I have to cancel your subscription and you, like, your recurring, yeah. okay. and you have to re sign up if you want a recurrence at a zero price. Um, and then that becomes the idea of, like, hey, if anybody has a concern and they really want a refund of the $25 that, that we've taken out, out of their account, they should be able to get in touch, right? Like, if you paid last month, um, I think a refund is in all is is okay. Like, I might not. I don't know. I'm going to open this up. Actually, um, would you automatically refund everybody who's paid within the last I don't know how many period of time, or do we just wait for people to ask? Like, be really open and say, hey, you can ask for a refund. But um, you know, I, I think, think we can ask. What was that? Sorry. I said I think I'd just let let people ask. Like, some people will be invested in the continuation of the society some won't care and some will just be like oh yeah actually i do want my money but that's one of the other ways in which we can gauge like engagement is if mm -hmm. people are actually i am so like divorced now that i want my money back now we have an indicator for that versus yeah. we've just given everyone their money back um, which gives us nothing in terms of that level of information the other reason why I'm loath to just do a refund is we lose money on refunds because we there's a Stripe fee with every payment. So um, there oh, is yeah. money that we have to pay Stripe no matter what, and, and we've lost that money. If, if we also, it sort of dings our um, like rating as a yeah. as a as a thing. I think I, at this point I'd have to like refund out of the bank account anyway directly. I just have to ask for their bank account details and yeah. directly transfer some money. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll leave that open and wait for people to ask yeah. for it. Yeah. But be open that they can ask for it, right? Like, I don't yes. want. It's not. It's not that we don't want to refund you. It's that. No. Um, it's. It's. It might not matter to some people. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Uh, I think that's an hour. So I think for everyone. Wow, so. Zoom. Zoom did pop up and say they. They yeah. gave me a gift. They gave me a gift of allowing me to go beyond the 40 minutes. Oh, Perfect. <laughs> uh, there's one, one other quick order of business, which is that there was an email through about renewing the domain. Um, given what we've just discussed about keeping things going, at least in the short term, I'm going to go ahead and do that domain renewal. Um, and I'm going to change the contact details um, to myself because it's um, one of the original committee members on that. Right. Is, it, is it possible to change it to a generic one to future-proof it? I'm not sure that it, it can be generic, unfortunately, um, but we've got the login detail, so we can always change it again in future if we need to. Okay. No issues. Yeah, we don't actually have a generic like PO box or... Thing. I thought we had aliases on email addresses and... Oh, yeah, but they, they, need, they need like a, a postal address and stuff for this one. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, no, go ahead. Say thank you all so much for sparing some time to come on board. Um, like these are big, important decisions that we need to make, and we need to make them well. Um, so thank you all for your input. Uh, I'm glad we had this conversation. Um, I think we can go forward from here. What I'll do is I've recorded this this call, so I will post it to YouTube, uh, and then that will be what I link to in the email to say, hey, if you want more depth, this is what we talked about. Um, I have also been scribbling a few minutes, so I'll write this up and if you let me know the link, uh, and I'll put that in the minutes as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. But thank you all. I like, really do appreciate all your time uh, that you, you give to us. So, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your evenings, everybody, and we will catch up again soon. Ciao for now, people. Take yeah. care, everybody. Thank you all. Bye. See y'all later. Bye.